Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the Alienware Aurora M9700. Those of you who have been here a while probably know that I have a slight obsession with the Alienware products of yesteryear. Looking back at the company's unique desktops, chunky laptops and reminiscing about the sometimes absurd prices is something I can't get enough of. Today's machine certainly covers those last two aspects. Weighing in over 4 kilograms or 9.5 pounds, this silver and black behemoth was really pushing the word notebook to its limit back in 2006 and at a cost of up to 4,000 US dollars, if configured to the max with any accessories, it would have been pushing your credit card to the limit as well. This exact model isn't quite the greatest of the bunch, featuring the third best processor available from Alienware at the time, but it still would have been a very special piece of kit 14 years ago, and its original owner would have been very happy with it I'm sure, at least for a while. These days it's looking a little worse for wear as you'd expect, but it has seen further upgrades in the form of a 120GB SSD and a 500GB hard drive. So let's talk about what's inside. Now the M9700 actually holds the title of the first ever 17 inch SLI laptop. It was somewhat of a technical marvel, squeezing two GPUs into a chassis less than 19 inches, impossible, but not for Alienware. With two 256MB NVIDIA 7900GoGSs or GOGSs crammed inside the magnesium alloy enclosure, any keen gamers would have been able to run any and all of the latest titles with ease, at least on paper. And here's where things sound less impressive. I touched on the processor earlier on and said it was the third best that Alienware offered for this machine, but that doesn't mean it was one of the best available on the market. See 2006 was the year that we really saw an advancement in processor technology. Consumer available dual cores had been available from AMD and Intel for about a year already, but the end of 2006 saw the release of Intel's first quad core. Some reviewers who tested the Alienware M9700 did wonder why a dual core variant wasn't offered, but no one really showed too much concern. After all, games still ran fine on single core setups, the 2GHz AMD Turion 64ML37 included. It's worth noting that the CPU did limit the potential of the SLI enabled 7900s though. Because of this it would have aged rather quickly and anyone who spent so much money may have been reluctant to upgrade so soon after buying one, but it may have been necessary as games got more and more demanding. I think this may have also been Alienware's last single core laptop, but don't quote me on that, I'm not certain, it does seem very likely though. Aside from these initial specs, we also have 2 gigs of 400 megahertz DDR memory, the aforementioned 120 gig SSD, and a 500 gig hard drive, a delightful 1440 by 900 resolution mirror, I mean screen, and all the ports anyone could ever need a decade and a half ago. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are also included as standard. As far as software is concerned, this bad boy is running Windows XP, the greatest operating system ever to exist. Sorry my bias is showing. It's been long unsupported now, so I think I'll steer clear of going online, and you probably should as well. It does support Vista and 7, but as a huge fan of XP, I'll be keeping it as it is for now. On this Alienware, it runs blisteringly fast and using it brings back a whole lot of childhood memories. Windows Movie Maker certainly got me all nostalgic. I used to create short films all the time, thinking one day I'd be the next Tarantino, Mendes or, most of all, the next Sir David Attenborough. Nature documentaries are where it's at, and I used to mess around filming in the garden all the time. Here in the Amazon rainforest, we have trees, some leaves, and some more leaves, and some sky. We also have wild, ferocious beasts like lions. Ah, and if you look very, very closely, you can see some exotic bird life too, but keep your eyes peeled, there it is. Ah. That's why XP will always be special to me. 
You may have noticed I've plugged it in and that's because it no longer holds a charge. I'm not surprised because even when it was new, you could expect less than two hours from the battery. This really wasn't for those who actually wanted something portable. So why don't we run some old school programs on this old school hardware and see what sort of games this can play. Let's see the single core Turion and dual 7900s in action, we're supported of course. I'm so very thankful to the seller who seems just as passionate as me about old tech because everything is as up to date as it can be and the description for the item was packed full of detail. Firstly, let's run one of the included programs that is fitting with the year the M9700 released. I haven't been able to make use of capture software today due to hardware limitations of the machine as well as my modern capture card which fails to recognise anything as old as this. Hopefully the record the screen method complements the general vibe of the video. 3D Mark 05 would have been one of the programs of choice for anyone wanting to determine how capable their GPU and CPU was. Running the benchmark with the dual 7900s gave me this score. With nothing to compare it to, I took to a few old forums and found that this beat a lot of other user scores, at least ones posted in 2005, but by late 2006 and 07, the Alienware fell a little behind. A few thousand dollars for a machine that became obsolete so quickly, a single core CPU really wasn't a fantastic choice on the company's part, but hey, I guess they didn't force anyone to buy it. As far as gaming is concerned, I have a few titles, but there was one small issue regarding the MSI Afterburner software. No matter the version I installed, it didn't want to detect the usage figures for both GPU 1 and 2. Maybe the cards are too old, I'm not sure, but I have taken comparative figures of the games with SLI enabled and disabled where applicable. The CPU usage is more interesting though because as I said before it is the limiting factor. So we'll start with the earliest title, Midnight Club 2. I apologise if you can see more of me than the game but this screen, the camera, sunlight and the level I chose didn't help. This title came out in 2003 and any games from that era will run fine on the M9700. The single core CPU is more than enough and a 7900 on its own will run it flawlessly at 60fps. I don't believe this utilises SLI, but it doesn't really matter in this case anyway. But if I paid this sort of money, I'd expect a solid frame rate in three year old games. Next up, it's 2006's Oblivion. Released the same year as this laptop, this is where SLI makes all the difference. It's funny that these days SLI and Crossfire is pretty much obsolete, when back in the days of this machine, a lot of companies and consumers were certain it would be the way forward. I guess it was for a while, but the current trend is squeezing as much power into a certain single card. A lot of high-end pre-built configs these days will only have a single GPU. Granted, it might be a 2080 Ti, but a single GPU nonetheless. With a single graphics card in Oblivion, our frame rate halves from 40 to 20 at 900p with the large texture settings. This is a case where that second 7900 really matters for anyone wanting to maximise the graphical options. Well, not maximise, but almost. In 2007's Bioshock, the original, not the remaster, the game ran with 28 FPS on average at 900p with the medium settings. Not brilliant, but things got a lot worse when I disabled one of the GPUs and we were seeing about 15. This is that pesky processor interrupting what could have been a smooth experience once again. I do love the original Bioshock and there is something more magical about playing it on older hardware, even if the experience isn't the greatest. And of course, can it run Crisis? Well, yes, at medium settings. 34 FPS was the average at 900p with the high texture settings, and back in 2007, if you got 30 FPS on Crisis, you would have been very happy, trust me. I remember getting about 11 on my grandparents' Pentium 4 and 6600 based machine. With a single GPU, you can expect closer to 16. This is what we were dealing with way back when. The PC melter itself in action. So there we have it. An Alienware laptop from 2006 in all its glory. Now this wasn't the best CPU you could get I know and maybe you're thinking wouldn't that do any better? And whilst it may have done in synthetic tests or some games, a couple of years down the line it probably wouldn't have made a difference what processor you had and you'd be severely limited by it either way. Maybe Dell used it because they thought dual cores wouldn't catch on, I mean most games certainly couldn't utilise them at the time this beast came out. Despite this, I think this machine is one of my favourite pieces of hardware I've ever owned. Something about it just stands out. 
It was like the turning point for the company who then started producing dual core and eventually quad core systems. Sure, the laptops and desktops are still expensive, but they still have a certain aura about them. Every time I see an Alienware under or on a desk, I can't help but stare. Maybe because my childhood was spent always wanting one, before settling for my trusty PlayStation 2 instead. With all that said and done, well thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed a look back at this very expensive Alienware from many years ago. If you did, leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.